Today I'm going to be talking about the Reolink E1 Zoom, which is Reolink's new camera. So this was sent to me for free, thanks Reolink for that. And it promises to have great picture quality and software that acts like a security camera, does all the stuff that you'd expect a security camera to do. But does it make good on those promises? So in terms of the camera's hardware itself, I would say that it does make good to its promise, at least for the most part. There are actually a few drawbacks by default on the camera that I would say would stop it from being a security camera. So some of those things are, for example, is triggered by a lot of things. Um, as with the Logi Circle, it's triggered by sunlight. Um, at least version one of the Logi Circle, I'm not sure about version two. But yeah, if the lighting changes in the room or anything like that, it is going to trigger it and it's going to record it and that will kind of get in the way of the rest of the footage, if you know what I mean. There is also the issue of if you've just got it left on a table, then um, a criminal could just basically pick it up, put it in his pocket and you wouldn't see the footage again. These are issues, I'd say, by default on the camera, but you can do a few things to kind of get around this. Although obviously um, buying this camera will depend on whether you want to go through those things or and whether you just want a camera that's just plug and play, you just want to put it on the desk and it'll work fine for you. So as for resolving the changes in the lights and the whole issues around that, a way that I kind of got around it is reducing the sensitivity and also selecting which areas I didn't want to trigger the camera, which are obviously the areas where the light is going to be changing. So on the ceiling, for example, when the light comes in, it usually shows up on the ceiling and that triggers it. Although, on the other hand, this is reducing the security of it and it's really up to you as to whether you know, you want to take those risks when it comes to the camera. And with the criminal being able to unplug it, there are, I'd say, two options to get around that, um, if that's something that would worry you. Well, three, really. The first one, just put it out of the way um, on the ceiling where he, the criminal wouldn't be able to unplug it. The second one is I did see FTP options in there. So they, there's basically a way where you can get the footage off the camera onto your own server. I didn't actually experiment with that, so it might be worth looking up online about that yourself if that's something you're worried about. And a third option is there's actually an option within the desktop app to basically have any alerts be instantly sent over to the computer where it's downloaded to a folder. Although obviously to do this, the app always needs to be open on the computer, which can be pretty annoying at points because if there's any alert, it will start beeping. It's really up to you. Those are just the kind of drawbacks and it's up to you whether you want to have those risks, you know, putting the effort to set all of that stuff up. That's something to consider when you get in this camera. But as for the actual build of the camera itself, it's pretty sturdy. I don't see that you'll have any issues with actual hardware. There's things included with it to um, be able to wall mount it, or ceiling mount it, I should say. But anyway though, if you've decided that you're fine with those risks and you want to get the camera, because it is obviously significantly cheaper than going with a full system, there's a link in the description to um, get it off real link site for 8% off or to get it from Amazon, which will, um, which is an affiliate link which will give me a bit of a kickback. But anyway, if you do want to get the camera, you do get it and you set it up, then you're going to be dealing with the software. So let's go through that now. So when it comes to the setup for the camera, you can watch my previous video, which is up there, which in which I go through the entire setup process. It's a really easy setup process. It shouldn't take that long. So from this screen, you'll go into the camera and then you'll see that there's quite a few options. The first option is to play and pause the video. The second option is to um, turn whether you want to hear sound on or off. The third is to take a screenshot of what's currently in the video preview. The fourth is to basically take a video um, from the camera. The fifth one is the quality options. And the last one is to make the video full screen. Underneath that, there's the option to talk into your phone, which will come through the camera. The second option is to basically take a picture or a video of a particular area of the camera. So you're not taking of the entire scene, you're just taking of a particular part and you can make that bigger or smaller by pinching or, or pinching out. And the next one is PTZ, which stands for pan, tilt, zoom. So that's basically where you can pan, tilt and zoom the camera if the name wasn't obvious enough. And from there, you can also focus, which you don't really need to do because when you zoom in, it will just auto focus. Um, but at least all the options are there. The delay is not gonna be that much. The delay is a pretty reasonable amount, although this is going to heavily depend on your network, so I can't really say for you whether it's going to be responsive or not. Just 
if you're going to have this far away from your router, um, you may want to come up with a different option. Um, maybe not have one that relies on Wi-Fi. But yeah, if you're going to have it next to your router, it's going to work totally fine. I did sometimes have an issue with connecting to this camera over LAN. I am fairly certain it's something to do with a power line adapter. Um, because basically it's connected over a power line adapter, um, over the Wi-Fi through that. So I do think that that's the issue. I didn't have any issues when I was trying to connect to it from inside. But basically on my laptop it works fine all the time. Um, after the first time that I got it set up on there, it's just always worked. But the issue comes with my phone. Sometimes it said um, connection failed and um, basically wouldn't show the live feed. Although strangely enough, if I went over cellular, it would work. So I do think that's an issue with my network. I wouldn't say that that would happen with you. And finally, the last one is playback. So this is where you can go back through the dates and see all of the recordings that are stored on the SD card. There's also an option to speed up the playback of those recordings, which is the 1x button at the top, which you can change to whichever of these you want. There's also the option to download a clip, which brings you to this other screen, which looks pretty much identical. Although do bear in mind that this does change the quality option to the lowest one. But basically, if you want to record a high quality version of the recording, make sure that you change the quality here before you click download. Otherwise, it's just going to default to the, um, I think it is 640 by 480 um, version of the clip, which isn't even high definition. And just as a bit of a side note for the quality options, I really don't like how they're named. <laughs> Please change the quality name options to just low, medium and high. I did frequently get confused as to which quality option meant what. Anyway, going back to the previous screen, if you go to the top, there's an option to sound the siren, which I don't want to do because I don't want to deafen myself or my neighbors. And then above that, there's a menu button, which gives you options like um, an option to go into picture in picture mode, which will put your video in a little part of the screen on the phone. And there's an option to switch between multiple cameras if you do have multiple video link cameras. Then going into settings at the top, there's camera info. There's also a share button, which lets you link the camera to other people's phones too. So multiple people can see through the camera. There's a toggle for push notifications on your phone. There's the option to switch Wi-Fi networks. And then if you go into the more section, there's storage, which lets you format the SD card. There's also the FTP options there too, which you can look into yourself if that's the route you want to go. Then going out of the more settings and moving down, there's display, which lets you rotate the screen 180 degrees if you want a ceiling mount it. You can also change what's displayed on the screen, how the video shows up, what brightness it is, um, what its contrast is and stuff like that. You can also change the quality options for the downloads, which isn't made that clear that that's what the quality is referring to. But yeah, that these are basically the download options. It's not the actual um, playback options. And then there's motion detection, which basically lets you control the sensitivity for the motion detection to happen. A trend with Real Link you're going to see is there's basically a scheduler for everything. So I'm not going to point it out from now on, but basically there's um, three options in there. There's the option for an alarm, which isn't the siren, which I was kind of scared by. Um, it's basically if it detects motion during those times, it will trigger this particular thing. There's the option for it to be on a timer, which means it's going to be continuously recording no matter whether there's motion or not. And there's an option to have it off, which is obviously not to record even if there is motion. But anyway, camera recording is basically just going to let you schedule camera recordings and it also gives a few other options here and there too. There's the siren, which will trigger the siren if it detects motion. So if you want to have it somewhere really secure where anytime motion is detected, it will trigger the siren. Good luck with that. I mean, you can use that. Just hope that, just put it in a dark place where there's never going to be any light or else the siren will, siren will just continuously be going off. Record audio is self-explanatory. It will just record whatever audio is coming through the camera. Infrared lights let it see in the dark and status LED is the little blue light on the camera, which shows that it's basically working. And then on the desktop side, you get an app which looks Basically, like a security camera app, exactly how you'd imagine a security camera app to look like. Pretty old and outdated for some reason. I don't know why they all seem to look like that. 
Anyway, connecting a camera to it, as long as it's on the same LAN, is super easy to do. You just basically click add device and and quite often it will just add it itself as long as it sees it um, before you even click add device. So that's super simple to do. There's a more complicated way to do it if it's over WAN, but I'd recommend just getting a computer in the same room as the camera, setting it up there, and then you can move it wherever it will still be able to connect to the camera over a wide area network at that point. Playback files are in this tab at the top here with a calendar and then the playback videos laid out by time. You just basically click before one of the time zones that's laid out and then click play and then it will play that particular section. There's also the option to download and take a screenshot of it. And then going back to the live view, there's settings along the side here. And there's also settings if you go to the gears icon at the top. And these options very much mirror what you can get on your phone. The only options that I didn't see on mobile were maintenance, which basically lets you schedule the camera to reboot at particular times or to update it locally. And there's also performance, which just shows some stats about the camera. So yeah, as you can see, it's got a lot of different options. Whether this is the right camera for you or not is going to depend on basically how secure the place is. If you need the place to be under high security, obviously you probably shouldn't go with this. You should probably go with a more expensive one where you can always guarantee you're going to be able to directly connect to it. You're not going to have to rely on your network or anything like that. Or you can have an ethernet cable plugged into it or something like that. Whether this camera is connected to the internet or not, it is always going to record the footage to the micro SD card, which by the way, make sure you get a micro SD card with this because it's really handy. So if you are willing to deal with those drawbacks and you feel like this camera will work in your situation, um, as I said before, there's a link in the description where you can either get it from the VR link site where you'll get 8% off, or you can get it from Amazon where it's going to be an affiliate link. It's going to give me a bit of a kickback if you do buy it from there. So the choice is yours. I mean, you can look at both places if you want, compare whatever you want. But yeah, anyway, if you like this video, be sure to give this video a like. And um, yeah, go and watch the previous video that's going to be on a card somewhere here if you haven't seen that already. So anyway, for now, I hope you all have a great day. I'll see you on the next video. Bye.